today's subject is my generation. My generation. My generation. My generation. For generations, Britain has been the home of tribal youth. Mods, punks, soul boys, metalers, goths, hippies. There was a time when young people made it clear what tribe they were, visually, obviously. Tribes, trends and cultures were so clearly defined. But this generation had been called identityless, beige, a singular cohort homogenized by technology. Can their identities even be defined? Wow, um, what a big question. What defines um, my generation? I'd say there's a lot. Fluidity, I would say, in terms of yeah, identity, sexuality, uh, religion, like religious barriers, all of that kind of stuff. With access to different cultures, information and traditions, the youth are able to mix and match their identity influences. But is this a true identity? I think there is something to be said for the idea that this is an identityless generation. Um, and it certainly might look like that from the outside. But then there are things that people say about groups that they don't belong to. Um, but then when you're within that group, you can definitely see the distinction. So this kind of borrowing and lending from other cultures, places, identities. I feel like they nurture their own identities myriad ways. That, and that, that's something that's exciting and should be embraced and not discouraged. They still conform to identity, it's just loosely formed, more complex and self-curated and technology makes it all the more easy to do that. It gets really annoying when people are like, oh, you know, always on your phone, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, I'm not staring at a blank screen. I'm, you know, I'm looking at a million different things, talking to people halfway across the world in a different time zone. So I think a lot of people assume that it's like, oh, you're just staring into like a blank void. And it's like, no, I'm actually just learning and collecting all this information. So it means that I can understand things better. People are much more like, um open-minded about things uh, because we are we have access to so much kind of like other modes of thinking we draw from social media we draw from actual real life experiences in other nations because we become more international and whether it's a positive or a negative these self-made identities are both developed and validated on social media when you post radical things people are much less likely to get interested or like it and that therefore gives you another like positive reinforcement to post more acceptable things online. I don't, I don't think you can actually help yourself. When you get a like, it's a like, you know, that everybody wants to be like positively reinforced in life. It's kind of weird how everyone worries about it so much, but it's because everyone that you know is going to follow you on social media and you don't want like all your friends to see you not having <laughs> anyone like your pictures, I guess. Social media not only provides validation of identity, but the expansion of it through exposure to ideas, people and world issues, bringing about tolerance and open-mindedness. I think our generation is definitely the most tolerant because you just kind of go with not being tolerant, really. You'll be connecting with these actual people and hearing their actual stories, not being censored, that it definitely humanises like everyone. We're, on the whole, very accepting because we can just you can just see it firsthand. I've met online, you know, people from so many different cultures, so many different backgrounds, just in five minutes from being on Instagram. This fluidity of identity, career, and even gender has provided the youth with new pathways when it comes to rebellion. Rebelling as we once knew it, breaking social norms to show defiance, is not effective enough for this generation. They would much rather spend their energy creating change or workarounds. They are fluid about their careers, creating their own pathways, they have realised that they can be successful without being on the conveyor belt that their parents were on. I think people's careers have kind of become more fluid and people's options have definitely widened up since the use of social media technology. Like it just shows like how powerful things like Instagram are and will continue to be just because they're kind of becoming a celebrity for just being themselves. And gender is one of the most significant and meaningful issues for this generation. Certainly gender is one of the kind of um, the main battlefronts, I think, that, that this generation is, is, is fighting, fighting on. Um, and I guess, again, it does come back to technology. You know, people um, who are previously, for whatever reason, unable to or perceived to be unable to do certain things can now do those things. 
um, and it completely thwarts uh, you know, ideas of, of gender roles and how men and women are supposed to behave and interact. So, is this really the identityless generation? I don't think this is the identityless generation at all. Far from it. This generation is able to, you know, to create a, their own identity with such ease. People aren't afraid to kind of slip in and out of identities and scenes. Um, and communities, and I think that that's brave. I don't know why people feel so put off by it. I don't know why it's intimidating. I don't know why it's less authentic. There's no such thing as authentic identity.